Hi, it's Agnes and today I'm going to be responding to a viewer, A.D. You actually wrote a comment in one of the threads and I'm going to read it out and then respond. So uh, the comment goes like this. I find that despite having manifested several big things like the two vacations I manifested that I previously commented about, I still have a lot of resistance with my belief in the law of attraction surrounding certain issues or triggers. As such, I find it hard to stay in my belief bubble. In my case, I have three areas of my life where I seem to really struggle the most when manifesting. Number one, love when manifesting my specific person massive headway has been made between he and I but the relationship isn't still at the end goal it's not an official exclusive relationship yet and despite me telling him that I love him he says he's not ready to say it and that's not taking into account the 5,000 mile distance once he'll show signs of being serious about me but then days later will say or do something that to my mind seems like the complete opposite. So what I'm going to say about your first area of manifesting that you're struggling with, which is love. When you are not getting from someone what you think you should be getting or what you would like or things are kind of working some of the time and then you know some of the other time it's not feeling good if you can come back to the whole thing that everyone is you pushed out so remember your thoughts your feelings your beliefs about now it's about a few things about the other person about yourself, about relationships, about women, about men. In this case, it's about a man. And also about love. And, and those beliefs that you hold probably stem from the people that you were around as a child, your parents, your grandparents, and the relationships that were adult that were around you and how they treated each other so your beliefs and thoughts and feelings will have started from there so if you are getting this on and off thing going on try and look at what beliefs you have that are operating about those things especially the ones you have operating about yourself so things like I'm not a priority or I give more than I receive in relationship or I don't matter, I'm not important, um, I'm not secure. If those things are radiating out from you, then you will get components of that working some of the time if you are projecting and doing some of the self-love stuff and the stuff that we talk about on this channel. So you'll be doing some of it so you get a good response and then sometimes your fears and your beliefs that are not so reflective of what you want will come up and then you'll get um, a photocopy of that through your person, your specific person. So the other thing is that you said here is um, that you, you've made massive headway but the relation still isn't at the end goal phase. Now, I see a lot of you do this through when I hear the emails that you send, okay? You know, this and this and this, but, okay? It's kind of glass half empty syndrome. Rather than looking at the shoots that have sprouted and keep giving thanks and keep appreciating, which then sprouts more of what you want, you're looking at the glass half empty and continuing to look at the bit that hasn't happened yet rather than going it's on its way isn't it wonderful how much I've manifested isn't it fantastic things are moving you know start to train yourself to look at the bits that are working focus and appreciate those and then you end up getting more but if you keep diverting back to 
yeah, but this and this and that's not working and that's not happening and I still haven't got, then you are going back to beliefs, thoughts and feelings that do not support your end goals, okay? So the other thing you said is that's not taking into account the 5,000 mile distance. Now I can tell you from personal experience, having manifested someone that lives in another country, that distance doesn't matter. It is only your thoughts and beliefs about distance that then create connection distance, okay? So, yeah, I'm thinking about how I actually did it. Well, I focused on the connection. I focused on the love feeling. I focused on how wonderful it was that, you know, I had money to travel and see him and him to see me. And I thought about how great our um, relationship was emotionally and mentally through conversation, through, you know, sharing stuff through email, through Skype, through WhatsApp, that that built a relationship that was really, really good and created a good foundation. It was not perfect without any fears or without any um, isn't this, is this going to happen or all that stuff. But those were the things that had to be worked through on my end to actually get to the end result that I have today. So distance doesn't matter unless you think it matters. Whatever beliefs you hold is what goes out and then gets photocopied. Okay. Okay. So if you say he's showing signs of being serious about you, but then days later he'll say or do something that to my mind seems like the complete opposite. Again, everyone is you pushed out so when something happens rather than saying well he's doing this or he's doing that or why is he why is she what you can do is ask yourself a better question and say okay if this is what I've got going on in front of me what am I projecting what am I thinking feeling and doing within myself that that is in front of me and you can use the Ho'oponopono prayer to dissolve that you can also use self-love meditation because the more you love yourself the more you're emotionally attractive because at the end of the day people run away from us or don't give us things because we emotionally are just not just not good to be around okay so hope that helps on that front Question two, my job, I seem to be able to easily manifest job opportunities to come my way, but I either mess it up or lose out to another person. Okay, so I'm going to stop and say now, if you mess it up or lose it to another person, there is more than likely that I am second best belief operating or other people get stuff before me or I'm not the confident one or I don't matter, or I'm not secure. All of those things are possibilities as to why that happens. It underpins you getting what you want. When, if it keeps happening and it's a reoccurring one, then that's something that you might want to look at. Okay, so for example, one aspect of my job involves voice acting and recently I auditioned for a role to voice a character in a game. I got through to the second round of auditions and they seemed very interested in hiring me, only for me to never hear back from them again. Okay, so again, go back to what is it that I was thinking, feeling and believing that got projected out and then in 3D it got photocopied and it came back to me as an experience, okay? Nothing happens to you ever in relationship or in job without your participation. It gets photocopied the contents of your consciousness. What does that mean? What you are conscious of through your thoughts, through your beliefs, okay? And your feelings, because they're all they're like little magnets. One, two, and, you, and your beliefs have its, has its own magnet as to what it creates and pulls in, okay? And as Abraham Hicks says, a belief's just a thought you keep thinking over and over. You have a thought, you think it over and over, it becomes a dominant thought and a dominant thought then changes into a belief. So none of this game of life is haphazard. It is all, everything you experience, money, jobs, cars, houses, relationships, panoramic, 
reflection of you. You, you, you. There is only ever you, okay? So I hope that just brings it back because once you know that, then you can come back and correct you, then the outside changes around money, around women, around men, around relationships, around jobs. It's all the same thing. So always come back to that. Okay, number three, you've brought up money. Money, I'm able to attract money in small bursts, usually when I need it the most, but it's never a constant sustainable thing. And I often find that I'm no better off at the end of it because an unexpected bill will appear to some, or something will break that I then need to pay out to replace. Okay, well, I relate to this because this used to happen to me a lot when I was, you know, not understanding the laws of attraction or even when I did. For some time, I was attracting lack of money, lack of money, lack of money, which meant my main going out vibration was about I don't have money, I don't have money, I don't have money. And if I get money, I don't want to keep it. So it'll go out to an unexpected thing. So again, thoughts, feelings and beliefs in this instance about money. Now, if you feel money is hard to come by, if you feel money is um, an obstacle that you have to work hard, this is one of the beliefs that a lot of people have. I have to work hard for money. Okay, and it was one of mine as well that came from my great-grandparents, my grandparents, and even my dad and mum to some degree had that belief that you have to work hard for money. Now, today I know you don't. you got to be creative, have fun, be in a good vibe and let go of you have to work hard for money and expect money to come and feel money coming to you to give love to you, okay? Remember, it's only paper and metal. It's the feelings that we associate to the paper and the metal that creates us having a lot or not having a lot. So doing a money meditation every day where you feel money giving to you and you feel relaxed and you feel it coming and you feel it staying and you feel your debts all going away and you feel the ease of money in, money out and that you're supported because this is again having enough money is about self-love too. Doing jobs that you like is about self-love too. People paying you for what you do that you absolutely enjoy, you can get paid for things that you love to do. It doesn't have to be that you do the things you love to do after work and you do the crappy stuff because you have to have a job and you need to pay your bills, okay? It's changing that relationship with money. You send love out to money like you do to a specific person and then you feel money sending love back to you. You relax, you surrender, you keep saying, I have so much money, I have so much money and you watch. It will change, but you have to stay out of longing, need, desperation, and I don't have enough. Whether it's around money or love, it's the same, same principle, okay? So the next bit, this is really good, AD. I like how you've written this. It's really lovely to be able to break it down and nut it out. I think it'll help a lot of people. Something I've noticed is that resistance surrounding love, work and money are a common theme in a lot of people practicing the law of attraction. Yes, I totally agree. I guess because those are the three areas in which the majority of us have encountered frequent negative experiences in the past, which tends to reaffirm all those unhealthy beliefs that leads us to resistance. Yep, until we become conscious of what we're doing and then we make it a focused intention to do something different okay because as Neville says Neville Goddard the past isn't dead it's still alive in you so your parents lack of money is still alive in you today through you not attracting any money because you're still carrying the thoughts and beliefs and feelings about back then so remember the past is still alive in that way so 
So while I do try to live from the end goal, as soon as something happens that feels like my desired manifestation has taken a step backwards, the resistance creeps back in and I find myself struggling to fully manifest because I'm pulled out of my belief bubble. Or perhaps the resistance is always lurking in the background of my mind and that's why I'm only half manifesting things. I know I have a lot of work through. I have a lot to work through in regards to those three particular topics because I came from a family background that has struggled with money my entire life. Okay, I've had a lot of very negative experiences in previous jobs and as such it knocked my confidence in my skills and abilities. And I've had a string of bad relationships which hasn't done my self-esteem any favours. Since everything is you pushed out, I've pinpointed that it all stems from belief that I'm not good enough. Yeah, and that a lot of people have that one. You know, it's not an uncommon one to have. If you don't have enough money and you don't have enough love, like you say, people that do law of attraction often have that one. Oh, since everything is you pushed out, I've pinpointed that all stems from a belief that I'm not good enough, which of course has been exasperated with each subsequent negative experience. Talk a uh, about a vicious circle so my question is aside from distracting yourself and I am phrases are there any other techniques or tricks you or your subscribers use to put yourself back into your belief bubble self-love 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 like that book that Kamal talked about Kamal Ravishant uh, if you haven't read it let me know and I will put the link down below How do you keep yourself in a prolonged state of positive belief surrounding your desired manifestation? Well, in one word, practice. You just keep practicing. And over the years, you have more prolonged periods of time because you've got more experiences of things manifesting and results. And therefore, you believe more. Okay. When there are still negative, less than desirable things happening around you due to not having fully mastered living from the end goal. Well, living from the end goal is the practice. That's it. And it does take time and you pop out like you say and then you pop back in. But I think too, listening to YouTubes is a really good way to live from the end. If you're listening to people that talk about living in the end and reading stories or listening to stories and that's why I've been doing the audio only series of results that people have got okay that's how you actually say well if they did this I'm going to try that that wasn't that hard because everybody has a different version of how they do things and how they apply law of attraction so one person's thing might resonate with you but somebody else's might not so there you go now for those of you, I know I've showed you these before, but these two books, which are mine, A Person of Interest has 30 true stories in it. And this one, my second book, Emerald City, has 30 true stories in it. They're not by someone who's a master who is going to teach you and you are going to be the student. It's going to be an ordinary person telling you a story. And then you see the result that they got because each story goes through what the desire was, what the person did to get it and how long it took. They've answered three questions in every single story. Okay, the links will be down below if you want to check that out. It, you can buy it on Kindle for like four dollars or something or hardcover or soft cover via my website or via the Amazon link as well. So I hope that helps a little bit. It's, it was a really, really good way that you broke that down and asked the questions because I think it'll help a lot of people. Thank you for putting your thoughts down. I think it's um, good to nut this out and it's important that way we learn. Okay, lots of love to you. Happy manifesting and practice, practice, practice and that's it for today. <laughs>